Hello, hello, Ederson Oliver here for the DNN store. Today I have with me Nigel Allen and Mark McVoy. They run in the NA development and bite the bullet. And we talk about that. They are the creators of Cart Viper and Event Planner and Registration Modules, which are both Evoke preferred modules. Welcome, Nigel, Mark. Hi, how are you? Very good, very good, very good to have you guys here. Um, I have to say that uh, you guys have a very low profile on the web. I wasn't able to find much about you guys. You know, I really researched you both, but ah, man, I have to play this by the ear here because, again, I haven't been able to find much, so you, you have to tell me a lot about yourselves. But let, let's get there in a second. So, uh, Mark, where are you located? We're located in the UK. Um... That's where we do our development, and that's where we're based, and our company is based. Got it. So, so, Nigel, are you located close by or in UK, but far away from each other? Yeah, we live about half an hour away from each other. Uh, so, yeah, we're pre pretty close. Got it. So, so let, let me understand this. You have NA development and bite the bullet. Mark, what are those two companies? I mean, what is that about? Let, let me know about that, you know, what is that about? Okay, well basically what I guess what happened is um, we both were developing modules and working in the DNN space separately um, for a long time we were making small simple modules and then we decided to collaborate together to create um, an e-commerce module thinking, you know, it's a bigger module, we need a bit more resource, so we started to work together and I guess it's one of those things that because we've been listening to the DNN store and we started originally separated. We kind of, to some extent, listed our two modules across the two accounts, um, just purely to so we keep our review rather than effectively merging into one. Um, that's how it came about. It's a historic thing. Um, but we work together on all the modules, um, and we do the development and we do support. So it's a shared um, workload. Got it. Okay. Okay. That explains. And actually, in a way, I assumed that 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 seemed to be the the logical understanding there, but uh, I can see that that uh, both modules, Cart Viper and Event Planner, they are both in a way e-commerce related. So, uh, Nigel, once you are back, or maybe you can answer now. I know that your camera is going on and off. That's not not a problem as long as you can, as we can yeah, hear each other. But let me ask you this: uh, Where does the interest of e-commerce come from, you guys? You no, know, Nigel. Um, well, like Mark said, originally we were making small modules uh, independently, like news rotators, uh, YouTube, etc. Gallery modules, and we wanted something that was more of a challenge. And we thought, what's more of a challenge than e-commerce? Everyone has got a different take on it, and we found over the years that everyone does have a different take on it. So there is so, such a great number of features you can add. It's almost a never-ending roadmap. So that's uh, where the, uh, the interest came. It's just basically trying to find the most advanced type of module uh, we could think of to collaborate on. Got it. And then <clears throat> I read a little bit about <coughs> Cart Viper and, and when you guys got started, it's mentioned there on the website that it started uh, back in 2010. And something that I found interesting, there's a quote from you. Again, I'm taking that from the website. Cart Viper is the work of two UK developers fed up with the existing e-commerce .NET Nook shop modules. We decided we could do a better job ourselves. So, uh, Mark, uh, in which sense you, were, you guys were fed up with the e-commerce modules for, for DNN? Yeah, we, uh, we took a look at the open source market out there, see what was available. And some of them missing like key features, um, like variant, at the time variants, uh, digital downloads, um, a rich supply of payment gateways. So we thought, with our experience, because um, we were both um, .NET C Sharp developers that had done other e-commerce projects outside of DNN, we thought we could bring our experience and our knowledge, create something a little bit more feature-rich, but also there was a little bit more um, store admin-friendly to set up, not overwhelming back office. And something that was quite nice and rich for the, the customers to actually, you know, interact with the site and make purchases. That was our 
or so our trigger for starting or picking e-commerce to some extent, we thought we could do a better job, a big size project, um, big size module, and that's kind of what we've been running. <coughs> Got it. Okay. So, so again, it's mentioned there very clear that we decided to do a better job ourselves as compared to the other guys. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Nigel, do you, and you, from your opinion, do you think that you were able to achieve that? Uh, we like to think so. We like to think that we like to think uh, that the two modules we've got with Carpenter and uh, uh high quality uh, modules, and to some extent that has been confirmed by reviews and obviously the evolved preferred status that we uh, we have attained. You now, so oh, ultimately that's uh, not really accepted. You need to say it's something to find. They've obviously tried all the different modules available to comment on, but in our opinion, we'd like to think so. Yes. Okay, good. So, uh, Mark, do you guys only work with DNN modules and only work with your own modules or do you do custom projects, custom work? What's, what's your, your setup there? Yeah, that's a very good question. Actually, what we intended to go is we sell our modules and based on the back of the sales of the modules, we probably do some consultancy work uh, for customers. So, say someone buys Cat Viper and they want to do to ERP integration, um, we could do that for them. So we can, you know, extend Cat Viper to provide the functionality that they need. But also, we found over the, the course of the years we've been going, people who bought Cat Viper and then subsequently come back and said, "Hey, we're doing a DNM project that's not e-commerce and not, you know, event module. Would you be interested in writing a custom module to, I don't know, show real estate data from some data stream?" And we said, "Sure, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that." So we've done. We've tend to do quite a lot of DNN work, uh, either custom modules or based around Cat Viper. And we've also done C Sharp programming in general outside of DNN. Uh, so we do a, a variety of um, work. But I guess for us, Cat Viper and event module is our uh, way to get a, a foot in the door with a, a potential customer who then sees what we can do. Um, and then from there, we can expand on our services. Got it. Okay. Okay. So um, I can only imagine, as you as you briefly mentioned, Nigel, that uh, it, it's it. There are a lot of challenges related to creating a an e-commerce module. So can you mention a few of those challenges? I mean, what are the biggest hurdles that you have to overcome when developing an e-commerce module? Um, the, probably the, one of the biggest challenges is because, like you say, there's so many facets to uh, Car Viper or any e-commerce module for that matter, you integrate into a lot of third-party gateways such as FedEx, UPS, all the different payment gateways. Um, the problem is they continually update and change, so you, you kind of have to keep ahead of the curve. So the, we obviously get upgrade to the latest version of those gateways. I would say that is one of the biggest um, biggest issues. And also, every time DNN releases a new version, we have to obviously download the, the beta version and ensure we work on that platform as well, on the latest version. So that is generally uh, something to keep on top of. It always keeps us busy. Got it. Uh, I, I had a look at the uh, no, Cart Viper module in the page, <coughs> and I, I see that uh, you guys support Stripe right now, and again, I love Stripe. I love that that uh, that uh, you know payment gateway. Uh, I don't know who the two, between the two of you are more familiar with Stripe, but uh, but Mark, I mean, can you yeah. can you tell us a lot us a little bit about Stripe? What Stripe is, and I mean, can yeah. you? Yeah, she was a Stripe. We uh, we've got. Let me just be clear first that we've got Stripe uh, regular payments. We've also got support for reoccurring payments in Stripe. Um, so customers who sell um, like a membership, they can use Stripe to then every month take twenty dollars from that member. Um, we occur without any interaction. So we have quite a rich integration into Stripe. Stripe's just a payment gateway. It's probably pretty new. Um, it breaks away from some of the ones, PayPal, which have various different offerings and flavors. Stripe's very much more simpler in that it's it just takes payment. It's a very simple interface sending um, a REST request over the wire. Um, I think it's pretty cheap, comparable to some of the other gateways. Um, yeah, it's just a gateway, but we, we've developed for it. It seemed popular. People have asked us for it. 
Um, so that tends to be our our methodology is kind of we're driven by our customers. So when people come and ask for gateways, we kind of get added, and that's why we've got quite a lot. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I ju just want to quickly mention that uh, Stripe is a great uh, solution for those that shy away from trying to, to get a merchant account. So again, mm -hmm. with Stripe, you don't need a merchant account. You just hook up your bank account and that's mm -hmm. it. You have your site integrated. I mean, that's a very good um, mm -hmm. solution out there. And, I, and again, I, 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 I was really happy when I saw Stripe there mentioned on, mm -hmm. on Cart Viper. So... Yep. If I may ask, uh, Nigel, who's your, who's the target audience for Cart Viper? Uh, is that uh, someone more technically inclined? It's someone a, a novice that uh, will just install it out of the box and it will work. What can you tell me about that? Uh, we like to think we cover both types of users. We like to think out of the box. Well, sorry, our aim is out of the box. You can just install, download, and install Cart Viper. Enter your payment gateway, Stripe, for example, or even PayPal, and it should and it will just work. But then again, we also have a lot more advanced features that you can turn on. So if you are, say, a larger company that require auditing or whatnot, we have the ability to audit all the um, all the changes you make in your product catalog. And also, we have a lot more advanced features where, if you are, for example, familiar with Razor templates or whatnot, you can create very customized uh, layouts. So yeah. To summarize, yeah, we like to uh, provide things that were simply enough out of the box that someone who just wants to download an e-commerce module, any other basic details, and just start selling within 10 minutes, you can achieve that. Or if you want to take things to the next level, we have the flexibility where you could do that if you wanted. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, how often? Uh, how often and what do you decide that goes on each one of your releases, Mark? That's a very good question. We have um, a roadmap uh, on our site, um, which effectively allows our visitors to vote on features. Uh, and basically, what we do, features that get effectively voted up get priority. Um, and features that don't get many votes may or may not get in that release. Um, so we're kind of dictated by our customers. But also, as well as the customers suggesting ideas and voting up, we doing you know various little improvements and fixes and we change things ourselves based on our own direction um, so we we're basically trying to do a mix of what, what we think you need and feedback from the community in terms of releases I think we try to do about four a year so once a quarter but sometimes that slips to um, three a year um, so yeah that's our target really once a quarter um, we do release out of band very quick small tiny fixes if we find someone's got an issue or someone suggests something that they need for a project, we might add one feature and just make a very tiny incremental, um, if it's just something very tiny for a customer, as I say. Got it. I, I just had the roadmap page that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I just had it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, let, let, let's talk a little bit about training and educating your, your clients about, mm -hmm. about your products, you know. Because mm -hmm. again, the same way as it's complex to implement uh, mm -hmm. from a coding perspective, an e-commerce solution, it's also it can be also a little bit mm -hmm. daunting, a little bit, mm -hmm. um, yep. you know. Uh, there is usually mm -hmm. a long, steep le learning curve to implement any e-commerce solution out there. So, uh, mm -hmm. how do you guys go about mm -hmm. training, educating your your customers, Nigel? Um, we would say the primary resource we have is uh, our user guide, which is obviously available to download from our, our site. Every time we add a new feature, we do um, document it in the, the user guide, with uh, screenshots and various annotations. Also, that's, so that's probably the primary um, resource, but obviously we provide free community support within um, when you buy um, a license. So that will provide you access with the support forums, and obviously as we've been going, for quite a few years now, the support forums has got quite a lot of the um, what we call the common questions covered and answered. For hope. So hopefully, that should contain a lot of the obvious sticking points of when you um, and start implementing it. But also, they can get in contact with us if they had a specific question that they feel the user guide or the forum didn't cover, and uh, we would uh, reply with uh, with feedback and I'll just get them get the issue resolved. Got it. Okay. 
Okay, and um, different vendors will have different ways to support uh, their customers. So uh, some 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 vendors will prefer that you report on the DM store. Some vendors will have forums. Some vendors will support via email. So uh, Mark, what is your preferred way of supporting your customers? Yeah, I guess um, you know you are right. We get we use all those three methods at the moment as you've identified. We tend to find, you know, we give 90 days support as standard when you purchase a license. And during that time, you know, you can contact us by any of those three methods. After that, um, we do have some, some support packages that allow you to continue to email us direct or via the store. Or if you don't want to pay, um, we've got these support forums. The probably our preferred method, I guess, is email. Um, it allows us to, you know, request screenshots and, you know, request any kind of login that we need to look at in case someone has an issue or something specifically is going on with their you know, particular instance install or got some kind of conflict with um, JavaScript or they're running an old version of jQuery. It allows, I guess it's a bit more easier to you know, go backwards and forwards. Um, but we're open to pretty much any channel of communication, I would say, in terms of support requests. Okay, perfect. So. Um... Uh, Nigel, if I'm if I'm new to DNN, and that's a, that's a, a generic question here, mm -hmm. if I'm new to DNN, I'm exploring to buy a module, not particular e-commerce, but a module in general. What kind of recommendations do you have for someone new coming to the DNN store and try to sort which module they they you know they need to they they should buy? You know, probably one of the um, starting points is uh, the revoke preferred product status product page. That's obviously got the uh, modules listed that uh, DNN have also taken the time to um, verify that they do meet all the necessary um, standards and they do work on the Azure platform, etc. So that would be my first uh, recommendation. Have a look on there to see if the, the type of module you're looking for is there. But then obviously there's um, the different filters. You can view products, the most popular products by uh, rating and also sales. So that's obviously a good indication of um, more popular modules, what's, what's selling. Um, and obviously there is the review, the review system within the DNN store. So obviously look for uh, high reviewed modules. Got it, makes sense. Yeah, that, that's a great starting point. Now. If we are talking, if I ask the same question, but now specifically about e-commerce, what are some of the pointers that you that you that you would like to make for a new a new user that is trying to sort out which commerce solution they sh should go with? Because I mean, again, starting from that starting point of going to the Evoke Preferred page, there are four e-commerce uh, solutions there. So mm -hmm. again. Where would you recommend uh, a new user to start sorting out, Mark? Well, first thing, I would, if I was a new user, I'd probably think, you know, take a test drive, take a free test drive. You don't buy a, a new car without taking a drive, um, you know. So I would say take a test drive, try and evaluate. I mean, I guess as you identified, there's four modules out there, and all four modules are pros and cons, and some will be a benefit to your business than others, or your commodity of product that you're selling, and your skills that you want to do. Um, so, check those out, try them out, speak to the vendors, see how responsive they are to any questions you have. Um, I think buying a module, especially more so buying an e-commerce module, buying the module is only the start. You need to have that support just in case you know something goes wrong or things change, you need some help, you need to be able to have a reliable vendor that can you know, be responsive, help you out, um, and sort any issues that you might have in the future. Um, that would be my suggestion. No, they, they, they do make sense. And I think that the point you made there about contacting the, the vendor and making sure that mm -hmm. they reply in a timely manner, I think that's, mm -hmm. that's very important because, again, mm -hmm. you, may, you may buy you know, the greatest feature set module out there mm -hmm. but if you don't have a vendor to back this up i mean yeah. that's the point because mm -hmm. you will need i mean and come on in a, in a in an e-commerce setup i think that it's the most complex uh, module to put together out there so again yeah. Yeah. sooner or later you're gonna need you're gonna need some help from the vendor great so mm -hmm. uh nigel let's talk about templating uh templating is a big part of any e-commerce solution because you have to 
to make sure that uh, you know your store setup matches the website. So, so uh, what can you tell us about the templates, templating side of Cart Viper? So recently, when we uh, implemented Cart Viper uh, five years ago, we had um, a template uh, token system where we would obviously. Uh, inject uh, the various product data in the place of the token when it was compiled at one time. But as has progressed, it's kind of a little bit old-fashioned now. So way, the way we've overcome that is implement Razor templates. Uh, so obviously, out of the box, the system will work and uh, format it nicely. But obviously, like you've addressed, everyone doesn't just want the same sort of look and feel. They obviously want it to look to match their existing skin. So with the Razor templates, it gives you the flexibility to take any all our product data and output put it in any manner you want it. Give you complete control over the layout, the CSS styles, etc., etc. So you can take a basic out of the box template and match your existing site. Yeah, I think the Razor template as well. Just to add on that, we've seen some really nice implementations where people have, rather than just display products in a grid. They've used the Razor templates to add a little icon at the top so you can do it as a list view or a grid view. Um, we've seen other implementations where people have totally changed affecting the layout of the product, and added new functionality or UI functionality using Razor templates. So it kind of opens the scope in terms of what you can do. Um, you know, you can use if statements and for loops and all the DNN uh, and the Cat Viper API kind of code to you know display various different bits of data or merge data with other sources. So it's really quite a powerful solution um, to make you know your store exactly how you need to be. Got it. Okay. So um, you know based on the history there at Card Viper, is there any particular implementation of, of uh, that module that really caught your attention and that say, man, I mean, those guys did a real nice job here. I mean, it, do you guys have any, any example of, of, of something like that, uh, Nigel? Yeah, uh, the Cashmere site that's uh, listed on our uh, example sites uh, is a really nice uh, implementation. There's lots of uh, Razor scripts to make it look really, really good. I don't know if you've got that example. Maybe. I have the... Should be on the homepage. I'm not sure if it's yeah. one of the one of the ones that uh, is presented on the Cart Viper uh, page as examples, but uh, we can definitely post that afterwards on the video post. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess there's another good site is the Dega, Dega.com, and we work with a partner um, to help them develop that. And there's a lot of functionality in there and integrating to the ERP system. Um, there's lots and lots of custom things happening behind under the surface, behind the scenes. We're particularly proud of. Um, so we do, you know, as Nigel says, we've done quite a lot of different types of projects and different types of customers from, you know, big corporations to, you know, little mom and pop stores. Our product working so kind of shows the the range of scope of our product and also our ability to work with different um, partners to achieve a solution that fits the client. Um, got it perfect okay um now let's talk a little bit about about trends in the future here uh and i yeah. i would like this question to be answered by both of you guys uh let's start okay. with you mark um yeah. what kinds of, of of new trends you see in the e-commerce space in the in the payment commerce space that uh, people should be on the lookout or, or that you guys are getting ready to start, you know, developing for that or integrating with that. What kind of things do you see there, Mark? I guess, I mean, the payment gateways are the payment gateways and they'll come and go and new ones. Of course, the payment gateways are pretty standard and straightforward to us. I think one of the biggest things that you've seen at the moment is uh, mobile commerce. You know, the evolution is people are using more and more mobile and tablet-based devices to conduct transactions, not necessarily a PC. Um, so we've got responsive support in our product already um, using Bootstrap, Quicker Bootstrap 3. So it'll, you know, the page and the checkout will work nicely on a, a smaller screen. Uh, one of the other things that I think we've seen is a move away from the traditional post-back functionality of a page. So we're seeing that more become um, 
Ajax and respond, uh, more responsive in terms of not requiring the page to go back, it's just the data. So what we've been doing quietly behind the scenes, uh, we've been replacing some of the admin features in Cat Viper with Angular based um, Ajax solutions and we see that being that eventually over time we would probably have the entire back office um, Angular based using JavaScript to post data back to a web service on the back end so that it will just make the editing the products so much quicker and responsive and easier. So we see that coming. Um, obviously DNN's moving to more of an MVC platform. Um, so that's on the horizon. That's something that we're going to, you know, as more data or more information comes from DNN, we're going to move down that path so that our module will work on DNN 8 and so onwards. Um, so that's what we're looking at at the moment. I guess it's more, probably more specifically things in the web development in general that we see changing, um, as I say, rather than specifically to e-commerce. More responsive based, Ajax and probably MVC, just the technology is moving and we're just trying to keep up to date so our product's relevant. Nigel, any, anything to add there? Yeah, I mean the obvious thing is, like Mark said, is uh, mobile mobile e-commerce, making sure the shop works perfectly on a, a small phone as well as a tablet and the PC. But from a technical point of view, implementing um, web methods uh, so developers can hook into, gain access and hook into our product data and orders. So if they wanted to pull those out and put them into their external systems or if they had some sort of off offline stock management system, then they could call back the, um, the product data, update the stock quantity, etc., etc or even pull the orders down to, into their system. That's where we're looking at moving forward, stopping in more integration points so uh, can like they can help manage your full order system and fulfillment system. Got it, okay. Okay, it makes sense. So, um, and that would go for both of you again. Uh, how do you guys keep yourselves updated with, you know, new trends, new technologies, new what's coming up next. And, and, and why I ask that is because, you know, people out there also want to keep themselves up to date. So again, I, I'm curious to see how you guys, you know, uh, get your new information, your, your I'd say, uh, juice for that. So uh, Mark, start there. I guess the easiest thing I do is, you know, read blogs and see what Microsoft are pushing out and see what, you know, in general is happening in the web development space. So you can get a feel for, you know, new technologies coming out. You can see traction growing around Angular. You can see, you know, traction going around MVC. The fact that Microsoft, you know, adopting web form support, you can kind of give you a feel for, you know, the roadmap of the future that you kind of need to follow. So pretty much, you know, once, you know, it's all out there. Just go out there and start reading and listening and learning, and you can kind of see the trends taking shape. Um, you know, we quite. I kind of quite looking at GitHub and seeing other projects, not necessarily DNN, but other you know popular projects, and see how they're implementing them, what kind of you know code methodology they're following. So there's plenty of sources on the web there for people to learn. Nigel, anything particular? Um, there's also a great one to see see what's trending at the moment. I mean, also, the web is such a varied resource at the moment, and new trends pretty much bubble up to the surface, in this case of keeping an eye out for them and uh, trying to move with them. Got it, okay, okay, so, so, um, what we, what should we be expecting next from you guys? I mean, do you guys have plans for, <clears throat> for other modules? I, I'm sure that there is a, and yes, as I have shown, there is a roadmap for Cart Viper, but do you have plans for other modules for expanding the or just going deeper into the e-commerce aspects of things. Let's start with you, Michael. Sorry, Nigel. <laughs> uh, we recently launched uh, two actual modules. Uh, one was um, a YouTube module. Uh, it's called Viper YouTube Gallery. It's all razor templates and responsive. So it effectively allow you to enter your YouTube user ID and display um, your playlists on the DNM site. So that got released about six weeks ago. And we also released uh, another one just before Christmas called the uh, Resource Management Pro module. Um, it kind of 
the aim of that module was to kind of pull up the gap between Cat Viper and the yeah, event panel module. Obviously, Cat Viper was great for selling digi digital physical products, etc., etc. And the event panel is great for some events that have a, a defined start and end date, but kind of where the event panel and Cat Viper kind of fall down slightly is selling an appointment type thing where the customer would come along and say, I want to go to a 9 o'clock appointment. Uh, so that was the uh, the end of the resource management uh, module. It was kind of to plug the whole sphere of uh, types of e-commerce things you could sell online. Anything to add, Mark, to that? Yeah, we've got a, we're working on some other little modules um, that probably we're not going to discuss too much today, but they're outside of e-commerce and what we've offered. Uh, so we do have you know things bubbling away in the background. It's one of those things that. Um, we're constantly working on, you know, Cat Viper. We're constantly working on customer-based solutions. Sometimes our new module offerings don't progress as quick as we like, but we're working on some nice things that are going to come to market soon. So, watch this space, I guess. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, Mark, anything that uh, that we have not covered here so far that you'd like to discuss to to talk about as well from your side, Mark? So what we've got is we've got a offer code for the DNN store, which is for Car Viper, which is good until the end of June, which gives you 15% um, off um, the standard Car Viper price. And the offer code is CV15, and that's all of the case, CV15. So I'm going to make sure that we write that down and we put that in the post. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. So again, guys, I mean, I think it was, it was a good one. I was a bit apprehensive having two uh, people at the same time but i think that we did a a, a, a reasonable job here i really yeah. appreciate the time that uh that uh yeah, and, and you have uh reserves at the side for for this interview and again uh, thank you very much mark nigel and i hope that you know you keep you keep pushing the boundaries of of the the e-commerce solutions there on dnn and if you got fed up with something else on the DNN space go and build a module <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. See you.